This video will be covering how Medicare supplements work with Original Medicare. When seniors first start learning about Medicare, they begin to realize where Medicare falls short, meaning where the gaps are in Medicare. Hi, I'm Chris Duncan, independent insurance broker specializing in Medicare. If you are new to the channel or haven't done so already, please subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell for notifications. And don't forget to like our video and make a comment as well. To check Medicare supplement rates, go to our special site for this at MedicareRateQuote.com. You can also call us directly at 800-910-3382 with any questions, or you can visit us at our main website at TrustedBenefitsDirect.com. A quick example of a gap in Medicare is the Part A deductible. The Part A inpatient deductible is $1,408 here in 2020 per benefit period. Part A has other costs you are responsible for, but for the sake of time, I will not go through all of them here in this video. Always check below the videos I make for links to other relevant videos that I have produced. And there is a link below to a video I made about Medicare Part A that goes into more details. Another gap is the Part B deductible of $198 and the 20% coinsurance. When seniors learn about the gaps and what they will be responsible to pay, their eyes, they start to turn to the Medicare supplements. It is the Medicare supplements that help pay for the deductibles, coinsurance, and copayments Medicare doesn't pay for. A quick example, and this is not all inclusive, but the Medicare supplements will pay for things like the Part A deductible, coinsurance for hospital stays that happen to last longer than 60 days, the Part B deductible, and the 20% coinsurance the Medicare beneficiary is responsible for, and more as well. When I am contacted by new clients, they inevitably ask which Medicare supplement company has a great reputation for paying claims. The answer I give is usually confusing to them. I tell them the Medicare supplement company you choose makes no decision on when to pay a claim and when not to pay a claim. The reason it is confusing is because usually they have had traditional non-Medicare health insurance for much of their lives. When we are covered by a health insurance company, I'll use a couple of name brand examples here like United Healthcare, Aetna, Humana, Anthem, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, and more. When we have traditional health insurance, our experience is with the health insurance company. It is the private health insurance company that makes the decisions about what claims are paid and what claims are not paid. This is the relationship we are used to with our health insurance company. When we have original Medicare, it is original Medicare that decides what is covered and what is not covered. I want you to notice I said original Medicare. What I'm talking about now has nothing to do with Medicare Advantage. If you have seen some of my other videos or read other articles I have produced, you know that Medicare Advantage is literally a replacement for original Medicare. And as I always say, there isn't anything wrong with Medicare Advantage. We have hundreds of clients with Medicare Advantage, but Medicare Advantage has some very different rules than original Medicare. Medicare Advantage is more like traditional health insurance and the Medicare Advantage company makes more decisions on what is covered and not covered. If you haven't watched my video on Medicare Advantage, there is a link below this video to it. Getting back to Original Medicare, Original Medicare is the primary insurance. Original Medicare dictates what is covered, not covered, etc. A Medicare supplement plan does not make any decisions and never influences original Medicare's decisions on claims. No matter what Medicare supplement plan and company you choose, you will know they have nothing to do with the decision-making process of what claims are covered and what claims are not covered by original Medicare. There are a few special circumstances when a Medicare supplement can deny their portion, but it is not something that happens very often, and I will cover this a little bit later. Let's use an example. We will say you had a heart attack and were hospitalized for five days. We will assume all treatments were Medicare covered, which is highly likely. We know Medicare is going to pay the entire Part A claim, except for the Part A deductible, which is $1,408 here in 2020. So for a hospital stay of 60 days or less, Medicare will pay all Medicare covered claims, whether the claims are $2,000 or $100,000 or more. They will pay all Medicare covered claims except for the Part A deductible. The Part A deductible of $1,408 is what the Medicare beneficiary would be responsible for in this example. Now let's say the Part B claim was $10,000 and I'm just making up a number for math purposes, it can be anything. 
And we will say the Medicare beneficiary has not, again, has not paid their Part B deductible of $198 for the current calendar year. They will be responsible to pay that $198 and 20% of the remaining $9,802. 20% of $9,802 is $1,960.40. That's what they will be responsible for. Next, we will say the Medicare beneficiary has a Medicare supplement plan G and has not incurred any claims for the calendar year in which the hospital stay incurred. Our fictional Medicare beneficiary also enrolled in their Medicare supplement plan when they first turn 65 and don't have any pre-existing condition clauses. I will talk more about these pre-existing condition clauses more towards the end of this video. Medicare is going to pay the full Part A claim except for the $1,408 deductible and Medicare will pay the full $10,000 Part B claim except for the $198 Part B deductible and the remaining 20% coinsurance. To get the full amount the Medicare beneficiary will be responsible for in this example, we need to add the $1,408 Part A deductible, the $198 Part B deductible, and the 20% Part B coinsurance of $1,960.40. You total all those together, and the Medicare beneficiary will be responsible for $3,566.40 in this example. This is only an example for illustrative purposes and your costs can vary greatly. Plan G Medicare Supplement, as you probably know, and if you don't, I have made a video specifically on the benefits of Plan G. Plan G will pay all deductibles, coinsurance, copays, and any Medicare excess charges except for the Part B deductible. The Part B deductible in 2020 is $198. In this example I gave, the Medicare beneficiary is going to be responsible to only pay the $198 Part B deductible because like I said when I laid out the example scenario, they had not paid their calendar year Part B deductible yet. The Part B deductible is only due once per calendar year. If they had already paid their Part B deductible for the calendar year, then the Medicare beneficiary would not incur any out-of-pocket costs for this hospital stay. When I give this type of example to my new clients, they usually say something along the lines of, Chris, this sounds great, this is what I want, but how do I know the Medicare supplement company I choose will pay these claims and not deny them? I wanna make sure I pick a company that has a great reputation for paying claims. I don't wanna be stuck paying these claims after I've paid all this money to the insurance company. The answer to this is very simple, although Medicare can be very confusing. Medicare has gotten this portion right, in my opinion, in regard to how Medicare supplements work with Original Medicare. Because Original Medicare deemed these claims Medicare covered, no matter what Medicare supplement company the Medicare beneficiary has, the Medicare supplement company must pay their portion of the claims as outlined in the benefits of the Medicare supplement plan the Medicare beneficiary has chosen. Original Medicare truly dictates when Medicare supplement companies pay and don't pay claims. If Original Medicare deems a claim as not Medicare approved, then Original Medicare will not pay the claims, nor will the Medicare supplement pay any claims. Like I said before, there are a few instances that the Medicare supplement can deny to pay their portion on a Medicare covered claim, and I am going to explain these instances next. It is important to remember Medicare supplement claim denials on Medicare covered claims, it doesn't come up very often. Medicare supplement plans have a right to deny their portion of a claim if there is a pre-existing condition waiting period. There are only a select few times when a Medicare supplement company may include a pre-existing condition clause. This is when a Medicare supplement is purchased when medical underwriting is used and the new policyholder did not have any credible coverage before the purchase of their new Medicare supplement policy. Most people purchase their Medicare supplement during some type of an open enrollment or guarantee issue situation. A partial list of guarantee issue or open enrollment situations include loss of group coverage, turning 65, a Medicare supplement is first purchased during the first six months of Part B being effective, moving out of a service area of a Medicare Advantage plan, and many others as well. 
To view a full list of Medicare Supplement Guarantee Issue Rights, please open the official document from Medicare Title 2020, Choosing a Medigap Policy, a Guide to Health Insurance for People with Medicare, and open it to page 22 under the section Medigap Guaranteed Issue Right. And as always, you can find a link to this official Medicare document below this video. A Medicare supplement may have a pre-existing waiting period when a Medicare supplement was purchased outside of a guarantee issue or open enrollment period. However, if a Medicare supplement was purchased outside of this guarantee issue or open enrollment period, and there was prior credible coverage, and there was not a gap of credible coverage of more than 63 days, then the new Medicare supplement plan purchased may not, I repeat, may not invoke a pre-existing waiting period. Here are some examples. If a Medicare supplement was purchased outside of a guarantee issue or open enrollment time frame and the Medicare beneficiary had a prior Medicare supplement they were replacing, this would be considered credible coverage. And any pre-existing conditions would have to be covered from the first day of the new Medicare supplement plan. For more information, refer to page 15 of the Choosing a Medigap Policy Guidebook that I referred to a moment ago. In the Choosing a Medigap book, it states, the best time to buy a Medigap policy is during your Medigap open enrollment period. This period lasts for six months and begins on the first day of the month in which you're both 65 or older and enrolled in Medicare Part B. Some states have additional open enrollment periods, including those for people under 65. During this period, an insurance company can't use medical underwriting to decide whether to accept your application. This means the insurance company can't do any of these because of your health problems, refuse to sell you any Medigap policy it offers, charge you more for a Medigap policy than they charge someone with no health problems, make you wait for coverage to start, except as explained below in a moment, while the insurance company can't make you wait for your coverage to start, it may be able to make you wait for your coverage related to a pre-existing condition. A pre-existing condition is a health problem you have before the date a new insurance policy starts. In some cases, the Medigap insurance company can refuse to cover your out-of-pocket costs for these pre-existing health problems for up to six months. This is called a pre-existing condition waiting period. After six months, the Medigap policy will cover the pre-existing condition. Coverage for a pre-existing condition can only be excluded if the condition was treated or diagnosed within six months before the coverage starts under the Medigap policy. This is called the look back period. Remember, for Medicare covered services, original Medicare will still cover any pre-existing conditions even if the Medigap policy won't, but you're responsible for the Medicare co-insurance or co-payment. Something I want to interject here, for those that are new to Medicare and first learning the basic rules, it is easy to forget that your Medicare supplement is secondary insurance. That is why, in my opinion, Medicare adds this last portion that I just read, and I'll repeat it. It says, remember, for Medicare covered services, original Medicare will still cover any pre-existing conditions, even if the Medigap policy won't, but you're responsible for the Medicare co-insurance and co-payments. Very rarely do we ever sell a Medicare supplement to someone that will have the pre-existing waiting period. Almost everyone we talk to comes to us either with some type of open enrollment or guarantee issue, or we are changing their Medicare supplement plan from one company to another company in order to save them some money. And they also had prior credible coverage. When we do get a cl new client that comes to us and is buying a Medicare supplement for the first time outside of an open enrollment or guarantee issue, or they are buying the Medicare supplement without prior credible coverage, we fully explain this pre-existing condition waiting period for their new Medicare supplement. We make sure they understand that this waiting period is only for their out-of-pocket costs Medicare doesn't pay. Original Medicare, which is the primary, never has any pre-existing condition waiting periods. If you think you will have a pre-existing, excuse me, pre-existing condition clause on your Medicare supplement, contact us. We will be able to ask you all the appropriate questions to find out for sure. Okay, we made it through another video. Thanks again for watching. If you have any questions about this or any other questions about Medicare in general, we are here to help. We help with Medicare supplement plans, Medicare Advantage Part C, Part D prescription drug plans, 
protecting retirees' retirement, and much more. Again, I am Chris Duncan, and I run an independent Medicare agency. We don't work for the insurance companies. We work for you, and all of our services are free to you. And because we are independent, we get to represent many, many different companies to help you make the exact right decision for what your needs are. Please do me a huge favor and please subscribe to our channel and click the bell for notifications. This way you will be notified for more videos like this I have put out. If you found this information helpful, please like the video or make a comment in the section below that it helped you or ask a question in the comment section. Or maybe you found this a total waste of time. Please comment as well. It will help me make better videos. Also, don't forget to share this video to your social media like Facebook and Twitter. It is easy to contact us. You can do so toll free at 800-910-3382 or get a free Medicare supplement quote at MedicareRateQuote.com and you can fill out our contact form on our website, TrustedBenefitsDirect.com. We are always putting out important information and important news and updates to help with things like Medicare Basics, Medicare Made Clear, Medicare Explained, Medicare 101, and much more. Thanks again, and we'll be talking with you soon.